road. Uh, I know where she's at. I'm not worried about that. But, but uh, moms need to be recognized. Moms need to be. Uh, and, and while we're on that page, let me just share something with you a little bit. It says the most remarkable thing about mothers is that for 30 years, they serve you leftovers and nobody knows where the original meal was found. <laughs> Anybody's ever ate leftovers, you can relate, right? Uh, th- these are just kind of kind of funny. A mother's a person you can always call to see how long chicken lasts in a refrigerator. Mom has the answers, right? These are just, they're cute. It's not, it's not easy being a mother. If it was, fathers could do it. See, they laughed at that one. See, they all laughed at that one. Let me just kind of read something to you real quickly. Um, just trying to, trying to get this thing going. Academic advisor, accountant, one, art director, athletic director, buyer, CEO, coach, daycare teacher, dietitian, instructor, event planner, executive housekeeper, facilities director, groundskeeper, interior designer, janitor, a judge, magistrate, laundry manager, logistics analyst, maintenance supervisor, network administrator, photographer, plumber, public school teacher, psychologist, recreational therapist, staff nurse, social media, Specialist, Taylor. That's a mom. That's a mom. And if we average the mom's salary out for the year of 2022, moms, if you average out your salary, and you're, if you're a stay-at-home mom, and that's what all the things you do, average all that out, a mom's salary for 2022 would be $196,201 a year. And all moms said pay up. Um, we're excited. Actually, I would say this. Moms are not viable. There's not enough money for moms. So would you stand with me this morning? We're going to get ready to worship. Our first song is always our meet and greet. Uh, it's glad to have Dallas and them with us this morning, Rebecca's brother. They came all the way just to hear my wife preach. Uh, no, they came to see Rebecca most of you know that tomorrow is the funeral for Jeremiah. So 10 to 1 is the viewing. At 1 o'clock will be the service. Uh, if, ladies, I need you to get with Gail and Robin after service. Uh, we're doing the food. <laughs> get with them. Uh, there are some things already uh, committed to, but we need more stuff. So I'll, I'll need you to get with Gail and Robin on that, if you could, please. Uh, and just kind of give them an idea of what you can do or what you will do or what you're able to do. If you want to make a donation, we'll, 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 that whatever, whatever it takes. But we need to make sure we have enough food and bless this family. And, and so service will be at 1. Right after service, we'll go up to the top of the hill behind Connor Westbury and have a meal, uh, mainly for the family and for those. So do what you can. Get with them after service, please. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, that a day has been set aside every year to honor our mothers. Lord, today we honor those that have gone on before us, and we honor those that are here, and even the ones that couldn't make it today, we honor them. We we just celebrate for who they are, and Lord, we thank you. Lord, and I want to say a special thank you to the single moms out there that are battling every day, uh, being, being mom, dad, and everything else they need to be, even the things that we read on this list. Even beyond, and Lord, I, I lift them up this morning. I lift up those that never could actually birth children, but became spiritual mothers. Well, what, what a what a special title that could be, or that is, for many out there that are raising spiritual sons and daughters. Father, we thank you this morning that we can honor each and every one. Now, Lord, fill this house with your presence. Fill this house with your, with your glory. Fill this house with your power. Fill this house with your anointing. Lord, let, and just move upon your people in a powerful, powerful way. And we ask in Jesus' name, amen. I was telling Steve and Debbie before, uh, after prayer this morning, this morning, about just a couple seconds, we're going to start worshiping. Center point over there is going to be worshiping. First assembly is going to be worshiping. Churches all around is going to be worshiping. Can you imagine what God's hearing in a few minutes? 
Can you imagine what God's going to hear? Because we're all going to sing different songs, but when it comes to him, he's not hearing words. He's hearing the hearts of his people. So this morning, worship from your heart. Let it all just give it to him, for he is worthy. Amen. sun sets free is free indeed. You have no obligation to the sinful nature anymore. You are free. You are free in the name of Jesus. I am free.
the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds the victory. So good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me.
Your fault, still your love far from me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worse, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so good. Even in the 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. The gifts of tongues and interpretation, church, spoken to this house this morning, an assurance that in your worship, there's a closeness, there's a unity. It's in your worship that there's power. It's in your worship that there's victory. You know, I, I, I sensed something this week. Um, just, in, just, in, just, just in daily, just, just during the week, nothing, nothing I seen, nothing. I was just, just kind of just meditating on it. And I know we always talk about getting victory. Well, you know, there's victory in Jesus. And, and I get all that, and, and I believe that. And I don't want to steer away from that, but I want you to understand something. I don't need a victory. I need victories. I don't need to get out of one thing. I need to get him. I need to be brought out of everything. I'm not looking for him just to be a, 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 a give me victory today. I need victories for the week. <laughs> I need victories for the next week. I, today I might find victory. I might walk out of here and be victorious. But tomorrow I may need another victory, church. It's not just a one-time thing. He's there. He's given us. Victory is ours for every day. He has already paid it. He's already given it. He's already won it. He's already finished it at Calvary. Victories are mine. Victories. Oh, we give you thanks, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. We thank you. Lord, you've spoken over this house this morning. You have spoken into our hearts this morning that it's in our worship that draws us close to you. Lord, I, church, I don't know about you, but there's been plenty, plenty of times where I've come in this sanctuary or in my office or, or even whatever, and I've come to a place where I went to kneel down and I really didn't know what to say or how to say it, but I began to worship in my spirit and I felt a presence fall on this place or felt a presence fall upon me that I haven't had an experience just in praying. I'm not knocking prayer, but I want you to understand something. Sometimes we need to have worship and prayer need to go together. When sometimes we might need to go or get in our prayer closet and just do nothing but worship. Come on, church. There's something in your worship. There's something in your worship this morning. Even when you don't feel like it and you worship, you feel like it when you're done. And we're thankful this morning. We're thankful for the worship in this house. We're thankful, God, that you have met us here with the worship that has been exalted in this place, that has lifted you up, that has highly lifted you up. Father, we thank you that you have filled this room with your presence in this place this morning. And Lord, as we move forward in our service with time for prayer, and Lord, if we receive our tithes and offerings, Lord, that presence that's in this place is going to maintain through this time as we come to you. We're just thankful this morning. We're thankful this morning. Father, we just give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor that you have come this morning, not just to visit with us, but to dwell with us. You haven't come to be a visitor, to come to leave. You have come to take habitation in our hearts this morning, that you may inhabit our praises. And we lift you up in this place, and we thank you this morning. We give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. We come to you, Lord humble this morning that you may lift us up we come and bow in adoration of you this morning because not of what you've done not what you can do but because of who you are we come to seek your face we come to seek your face lord i don't need to come for a handout i don't want your hand today i want to seek your face i want to seek your glory for who you are for nothing but just who you are because what, who you are can sustain me for whatever I need. Thank you this morning. Thank you. You may be seated if you can, Steve. Excuse me. Good morning. And happy Mother's Day. I, uh, I've been in prayer about some, about some stuff, especially during this prayer time. 
As y'all know, I don't usually bring my cell phone into church, but I have the Bible app on it, so that's what we're going to do today. And I want to ask you a question. Who are you? Well, you have salvation, so you're a child of God. But who are you? I want to read a scripture to you. This is from 1 John 6 chapter. So there came a man commissioned and sent from God whose name was John. This man came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe in Christ the light through him. John was not the light, but came to testify about the light. I've said that to you this morning because John testified about the coming of the Messiah. We have a Lord and Savior who's coming. You should be a John. Everyone in this house should be a John the Baptist. If you have salvation in your life, you should be a John the Baptist. Now, you may not walk up and preach on the streets, but you can be a considerate heart to the kingdom of God. You can show people compassion. Um, there's been several instances this week that God has allowed me to, to be able to do that. I didn't really realize it when I was doing it, but then afterwards I'm like, well, thank you, Lord, that was, that was you doing that. We, we, we have a men's group that gets to get on Friday mornings, and there's 10 or 12 of us. We have breakfast. And there's little, one little waitress in there, and she's just running through there just trying to handle everybody's orders. And it gets a bit chaotic for a few minutes. And she was walking away from the table for this past Friday, and she threw her hands in there. She said, I only got one set of hands, you know, like this. And uh, I could tell it was bothering her. So when she came back to the table, I called her off to the side. I said, I want you to know something. We really do appreciate you. We really do. And she tapped me on the shoulder. She said, Sugar, that's just fine. That's just fine. And understood that. But I wanted her to know that we truly did appreciate her. The way things are today, you go to these restaurants, they can't get help. Every place else you go to, they can't get good help. Where it's gone to, I don't know. I'm still working. I'm 62 years old, and I'm still working, so I don't know how they're doing it. But I know that God has got us. And we should be carrying him in our hearts. So I'm going to ask you this morning, whatever need you have this morning, we want to pray with you. But again, I want you to search your hearts for what God can instill in your heart for his kingdom, not for ours. We're great about asking for what we need, but what we want. But God's not an ATM. But I can tell you this thing for sure. If you invest in him, that ATM will spit out more than you can handle. Now, I can witness to that. It's not about what we get from him. It's what we give to him and to his kingdom. So I'm going to ask you this morning, if you've got a need this morning, I don't care what, if it's physical, financial, spiritual, whatever it is, I want you to come up for prayer. But I also want you to search your hearts this morning when you come up. Let's ask God what we can do for him instead of what he can do for us this morning. Won't you come?
out of the room. He said, what is commonplace? What escapes my sight? You are the trial to me. Now I know she was right. She was talking to Jesus. She was talking to She's been talking to Jesus for all of her life. Mama used to drag me to church Sunday morning and Wednesday night. Khaki pants and a polo shirt. Boy, I put up a fight. She said, son, one day you'll thank me. me talking to Jesus. She got me talking to Jesus. Yeah, my mama was right. Deb, you need to step down here for a second. We're going to take up offering in just a minute, but right now we're going to do, we're going to do one of my favorite things in the church to do. I love weddings. I love leading people to Jesus, but I love, love giving children back to the Lord. And we're going to dedicate Miss Jocelyn this morning. So, if uh, all the family that's going to be involved, you want to come on up now. Um, those that are here to participate and be a part of this, <laughs> y'all two turn this way and face me. They're going to come up. Anybody going to take pictures? Y'all take them. Whoever going to take pictures? Somebody grabs, somebody grabs Robin Cameron and be the photographer for us today. My photographer's not here. I fired him, but, you know, I'll hire a new one today. Um, yeah, Brittany can take pictures. So, there's Miss Liza. Hi. Say hi. Nope. Give your thumbs up. Yeah. Um, baby dedication is a, uh, a beautiful ceremony, a beautiful... Uh, just a giving back to God. Children are not ours, they're a gift. And, and, and you're, you, become a good, you become a steward when God gives you children. Oh, not over finances, but over a life. I think it's a huge responsibility that God would look down and choose the parents for every child. Now, I had the best parents. Huh? See? Y'all are right. All of us have the best parents. These children have the best parents. And, and be, it, it does take a village. It does. It takes grandparents. It takes others. It takes the influence from so many. Uh, I put on Facebook earlier this morning that I want to thank all the moms, physically and spiritually, that impacted my life. So all across the board, there's, there's, um, there's, there's, there's just children that have been impacted by moms and dads and, and other but today, we just give back to God what God has given to Josh and Jennifer and with Liza. We're just here to celebrate this. Hannah took Samuel to the temple. She prayed for a child. I want a, I want a, I want a child. I want a son. And God, if you give me a son, I'll give him to your service. And when he got older, she took him back to the temple, consecrated into the temple to work for the, for the work of the Lord. So... Children are given to us to, to give back to God. And um, what we do is we ask the parents that Josh and Jennifer, do you promise through the upbringing of Jocelyn that you'll teach her at an early age that Jesus Christ is the Lord, Lord of her life and lead her to a relationship with the Lord? Um, do you promise that you will live the godly life in front of her and as an example to be the godly parents that God has placed in you for her. My part? Yep. Okay. I know Liza Best already got these once before, but there's two roses. One's red, one's white. One is a symbol of the blood from the Father. The other is a symbol for the purity 
that has to be taught. There's something I didn't realize until last night when I was putting these together, and it's something that Pastor Barnes and Mary Grace had told me a long time ago, and I do the same thing, is they put three ribbons, and they're for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that is wrapped around each one of these as they're wrapped around each one of you. Jennifer, this white one comes to you and is to teach Jocelyn that there's pureness of heart, which you absolutely know about because you have a sweetest spirit of anything I have ever seen. And I know that you're going to teach that to your daughters. And Josh, the bloodline of the father goes through you to these children. And it's you to teach an example, to live an example of a father, a husband, in your household at all times. And then, I do believe Jocelyn's already got a Bible, I think, before at her baby shower, but we have another one. And it's just so that you both have the Word of God to instill in her heart. These little words are really small, so I suggest you use your big Bible, but these, this is just for her. This is just for you. She's like, oh, let me get those pages. I know everybody has seen Miss Jocelyn, but this is Jocelyn, a female thing. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah, just like you. Attention. y'all uh, as a church put your reach your hands forward and just in agreement with us father we give jocelyn back to you this family gives her back to you to be your servant to care for you to, that you care for her lord that you've called this young girl to, to to mighty things in the lord that you've you've given her this place to do extraordinary things to do powerful things and lord as long as that she is, is with you, Lord. There's, it's unlimited what the possibilities can be. Lord, we surrender her to you. Give her back to you. Yes, Lord. Lord, I pray for Josh and Jennifer and, and Liza as this family raises this child, Lord, into the fear and adoration of the Lord, that she submits herself to you at an early, early age, and that they teach her the ways of the Lord through the word and through living by example. And we thank you for it right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm sorry <laughs> that it didn't go your way. I think, I think she wants, is it Layla? Do we call her Layla? I think she wants Layla. She keeps going like this. I got what I wanted. <laughs> I love you. Beautiful thing, church. Beautiful thing. It's a beautiful, beautiful. You too. Love children you. are children are angels, so they get to a certain age. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Have the ushers. I already did yours. You already had your moment, okay? Uh, have the ushers come at this time. We're going to receive our morning tithes and offerings. There you go. There we go. Tithes and offerings is something that we can, uh, that we can honestly listen. You can never, and, and I, know, I know this is a cliche. I know this is a saying. I know every pastor, every minister, everybody that stands up, takes up an offering says this, but I'm here to promise you, you can never outgive God. I dare you to try. In everything, not just in finances, try to outgive him. You will, you will wear yourself completely out and be drained if you try to outgive him. Because listen, he started out giving by giving his only begotten son. And I don't think anybody can top that today. But I want you to try. Stand with me. Put our tithers blessing on the screen. This is just a, something that we pray, that we believe. We believe the words. If you don't want to say it, don't say it. But still give. Because it's, it's the giving that releases 
in your life. It's, it's, you know, it's funny to me. Let me just say this real quick. Everything that God talks about in, 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 in a harvest, in reaping, everything he talks about is always about a seed, Dallas. It's about a seed. We were seeds. And, and we and brought a seed that was conceived and, and brought forth a child. It's, it's seeds. Everything's about sowing a seed. But a seed cannot do anything until it dies. And as long as you hold it, it still has life to it. When you release it, you're saying, Lord, it's in, it's in your soil. And I'm telling you, when you put it in God's ground, something's going to come out of it. This is my tithe. It will do what God says it will do. The windows of heaven be opened over me and my house. An abundance of blessings will be released that I won't have adequate room to contain them all. My house will be filled with joy, laughter, many testimonies of what God has done. I am the seed of Abraham. The oath God swore to him is my inheritance. Therefore, I release my tithe and offerings into this storehouse, new life, assembly of God, so that we may be a house of rescue. Father, I ask you to bless the gift, bless the giver. Lord, I ask you to bless the faithfulness of your people. We are so grateful and honored that their faithfulness has not faltered. Even in, in, in hard times, Lord, they have been, they've trusted you. Now, Lord, bless the gifts today. Let them multiply and further your kingdom. But, Lord, as we pray every week, help us be good stewards with what is sown into this soil. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Would you bring your tithes and offerings forward, please? Presley had it. Liza took it. Presley took it back. Presley put it in. Liza wanted to put it in. <laughs> yeah, I should have gave him one each. Well, happy Mother's Day to all of the moms. Spiritual moms, physical. Uh, we celebrate today the moms that are here. I celebrate my mom who's been in heaven. Wow. Man. I forgot how long. Yeah. Woo. Had to get the dates set up. But I'm telling you, uh, there's not a day that goes by I don't think about her. Moms are special. Moms are, you know, it, I, I was praying this this morning in the sanctuary that, you know, God's our father. And, and, you know, God can be whatever he needs to be to us. If there's a child out there that doesn't have a mother or father, the Holy Spirit can be that. Can, you know, can fill that void, that emptiness. But it's amazing that God, we call God our Father, but yet God gave, God gave us earthly fathers, but he, he, he left the responsibility of moms being on our earthly mothers. Isn't that amazing? That you have a, you have a special place in God's heart that he's gave you the opportunity to be a mother. Now, maybe you haven't had your own children but you think of the children and the, and the women, young men and women that you've spoken into, that you've loved on and prayed over, that, that are like spiritual children to you. In any way, form, or fashion, somehow or another, you've been a mom figure. And we want to just thank you this morning. We're grateful for that. Um, you can come on. Um, I uh, had went to someone uh, a while back maybe like in February, and uh, I had asked this woman if she would be willing to come today and speak for us, but she had already made a prior engagement, but she hadn't got confirmation on it, and, uh, and then I, you know, we were trying to still communicate, and then revival, God did something, did a, a mighty work in this place in our revival, and um, 
The Lord spoke to me and said, don't worry about it. There's somebody prepared. So this morning, New Life Assembly, my wife, Deborah, is going to be bringing a word to us. And I'm excited, and I'm happy, and if she does better than me, she'll never preach again. Good morning, church. <sighs> this is not easy. Um, There is so many blessings that we have, and sometimes we don't even realize the blessings that we truly have in our lives until they're not with us. And my mother-in-law was one of those. Um, she taught me a lot about what it means to be a godly mother. When I first married into the family, I didn't appreciate that very much because I thought it was telling me that I wasn't, I wasn't doing it right or I wasn't good enough. But it wasn't that. It's, she was just giving me examples of what was to come. And there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about her. And I had my own mother, who was not a godly mother, but that taught me to be strong, taught me to be giving, taught me to be truthful, and taught me to be fearless. She, again, she wasn't a godly woman, trust me. There was, there was times that it was, it was hard after I became a saved because of that. But you know, God has people in our, in our path for reasons. And I had, a, I had this huge thing talking about different mothers of the Bible. And yesterday, my husband, how he tells us all the time, he has, you know, he's in the middle of doing something, going over his notes, and God changes it. Well, God changed it. And... He brought me back to something that he gave me when I first got saved because if you've lived your life one way for so long and he changes it, it doesn't just change your soul, it changes who you become. And if it doesn't, then you need to go back and figure out if you actually found something or not. Just going to say. But there was a verse that he gave me that has been with me this entire time. And that's what he brought me back to. He brought me back to Psalms 19, 14. It said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O Lord. My firm and immovable rock and my redeemer. My daughter and I had a conversation yesterday when we spent time together. We was talking about the fact that my daughter's second language is sarcasm. Her and my son have it in spades. And they're saying, well, we, I just don't understand where we got it from. And I said, well, there was a time when I was extremely sarcastic. Not in a spiteful way, but that's just who I was. And she says, I can't see that, Mom. Why did you change? And those words I just gave you changed who I was because I realized the things that came out of my mouth could harm someone not meaning to. Some people don't know how to take sarcasm, and they take it as an attack on who they are. And I'm not saying that because she's here and she's listening to me. That's who she is. She is who she is, and I love her for it. But I had to change because God had something planned differently for our lives. And at the time, I didn't even realize it, how far it was going to go. But he did. And he made me understand that 
the words we speak have impact. The facial expressions that we have when we speak have impact. I believe with all my heart that you can be strong but gentle. You can be firm but not immovable. But if you go through life being a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And you've got to make your point. Everything is not a hammer or a nail. You have to become soft with your spoken word sometimes. Jesus gives us that example that he was firm with his disciples when they did not do what they should do. But he was also loving in his rebuke because he rebuked because he loved, because it taught a lesson. When we stop teaching lessons with our, with our words, all we're doing is dictating. God teaches love. He teaches acceptance, but he also teaches that there is a right way and a wrong way. For a long time, I was a hammer in my life, and everything was a nail. But I thank God that he changed me. Last night, as I was writing my notes, and he was changing everything as I was writing, and I'm like, Lord, that's not what I studied. It was, it was the most immaculous, imma- miraculous thing that he did. I just sat my stuff down, and I just sat there, and I'm like, I can't do this. I can't just start over and have it make sense. And his voice in my heart said, look at what you have in your hand. And I had this. I usually write with a pen, but I had a pencil. And he says, that's me. You may write something with your life, but you have me as your eraser to teach you when to wipe out those things that you have put in place and rewrite your history. He says, why do you think I made day after night? He said, the night was for those things to be erased and the day was for a rewriting of history. I have seen people that were so strong together lose somebody in our family it was it was nanny she kept us together (laughs) sorry because she was not a hammer (laughs) she was love and she taught us as a family that family loves you know why i love this church because we're family And even when we don't agree, we love. I may not agree with what everybody says. You may not agree with everything I say. But we have a bond. We have Jesus. And that is love. That's the reason why we have to temper our words. Actually, one of the first lessons that I learned as a Christian was just because it came into my head does not mean it needs to come out of my mouth. And I've taught that to some spiritual daughters and my own daughter that just because it comes here does not it means needs comes needs to come out here. Sometimes it's when it comes here it needs to be prayed over here before the words come out of your mouth. Because it says in Matthew 15, it says, hmm. Matthew 18 says, But whatever word comes out of the mouth 
comes from the heart, and this is what defiles and dishonors a man. Our words have consequences, church. Words spoken in anger usually have a way of impacting you more than you'll ever know. I do believe his word says, be quick to listen and slow to speak. Because in our, in our rush to say something, we may say the wrong thing. And you don't know how much you may hurt someone's spirit. But when we let him speak through us, it's not going to hurt. It may correct, but correction is love. It's not hurt. In that story, when Jesus said those words, he was talking about the fact that people kept saying what they were putting in is what was defiling them. And Jesus had to make his disciples even understand because I think it was Peter that says, you just offended the Pharisees by what you said. He says, no, 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 no. What, what, what hurt them was the fact that they knew it was wrong to say it in the first place, but they wanted to put their feelings upon you. They wanted to put their yoke upon you. That yoke is not somebody else's to put upon you. It's for God to remove that yoke. It's for him to bring you strength. What defiles us is what we hold in our heart and harbor. It's those thoughts that we have in our head that we let keep building and building and building that become all of a sudden they become a reality to us that are not a reality. The reality is that we are responsible for what we speak. We're responsible for what we think. We're responsible for what we do. And sometimes we just have to stop because just because we think it doesn't mean we need to say it. If someone hurts you, it's not the right time sometimes just to say something right then because like I said, our words may come out the wrong way. Jesus gives us words of hope. He gives us words of love. This entire Bible is a love letter to us. It's his love poured out to us because he said, I do believe it's in 1 John, I'm not going to quote it totally. It was those that come after that have not seen are the ones that are truly blessed because they believe. What makes you believe? Is it an example that's put before you or is it words on a page? I had some truly godly women make examples before me when I got saved. I had my mother-in-law. I had my niece. I had a pastor's wife. And I know I've said this anytime I've spoken to y'all, that truly, truly, truly showed me what it meant to be a godly woman. Because she was not part of my family, as per se, where I was with her all the time. But she never failed to correct me when I did something wrong. But she did it in love. And she did it to the point where she helped me to understand. And that's what the Word of God does. It helps to understand where He's coming from and where He's taking us to. There's a little bit of commentary about that verse in here, and I just want to read it to you. It says, As we think in our hearts, the inner beings, so we are. The raw material of our actions is what we take into our minds and allow to settle in our hearts. David put it this way, Your word is a treasured and stored up in my heart. Your word I have treasures, treasured and stored up in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Psalms 11, 19. 119.11 the other side as seen in the Psalms 101.3 says I will set no worthless or wicked thing before my eyes Paul says the believer must take every thought and purpose into captivity 
to the obedience of Christ. What are your thoughts being taken captive of? What are your eyes seeing that are showing you a different way? Someone asked me, you haven't posted this, you didn't make a comment on this about fa at Facebook. My husband even asked me the other day, he says, I put something on there, you didn't comment on it. And I said, I truly do not get on there as much as I used to because it depresses me. When I see Christian people put some of the things that they put on Facebook, it really truly is depressing. Because it's like, do you not realize that that is a captive audience that you just changed who you are in their sight? And then I think it's another thing that was brought to my attention recently is how do we portray to our children that we are wanting them to be better if they see us do the same things over and over again, but we say something else to someone else. We have to live in our homes, on our jobs, in restaurants, in the grocery store, which can be a total terror in itself. But just because someone else is having a bad day does not give us a right to have a bad day at them. Like Brother Steve said this morning, the girl says, I only have two hands. Do you know how many times I said that in my head in my house? Sometimes I only have two hands, I can't do everything. We have to watch how we react. Our words have consequences. Do you want your words to be the words that drive your children away from God or bring them to God? I truly believe in my heart that each one of us want to do, do the Christ way. And I believe that we have it in us to make a difference in this world that we walk out of here today and go into. Some of us were raised in families with pastors in our families. Some of them, you know, some people have missionaries in their families. But guess what? You're a missionary in your family. You're a pastor in your family. I read something my husband put on Facebook this morning talking about his mother being a true Proverbs 31 wife or mom. And I can't really truly say I'm that way all the time, period. But he's making me better every day. So I won't say I do everything godly because I don't. <laughs> I don't. But I try to stop and think before I speak. Because when we get into an emotional state, what's coming out of us is not what we truly want to come out. It says right in our head, but it don't always articulate out right. All I can say is what the word says over here again. In Psalms 18, where'd it go? No, I'm sorry, Psalms 19, 14. Let me say it one more time. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, every day, if you start to see things starting slipping in your life, start praying that every morning. Because God's going to bring to you your words, or he's going to quicken your spirit when you start to say something. Is it truly the thing you need to say? If you're trying to witness on your job, you better have the right words and the right spirit in your heart for the words to come out of your mouth. Because somebody's only going to hear what you don't want them to hear. They're not always going to hear what you want them to hear. 
that one thing that you say wrong is what they're going to remember, not all the things you said right. Moms, I extort to you, let your children and your grandchildren see you as you want to be seen by them. Remember, they have ears, they have eyes, they mimic what they see, what they hear. Don't be a hammer, be a feather. There's a time to correct, but there's also a time just to love and just to teach. And don't let the words that we say be what they only hear when they come out in the wrong way. I don't know how to say that any better. How we speak and what we speak make a difference in lives. If they only hear anger, if they only hear anger, that's all they're going to know. They're not going to understand when you try to speak peace to them. If, you only, if they only ever hear sarcasm, I said sarcasm, I didn't mean to say that. I wasn't talking to you. If they only hear sarcastic answers back to what they ask you, that's how they're going to start talking back to you because that's all they're going to know. <laughs> Lord help little Annie. She just makes my heart smile. Um, she's having a ball over here with this little ball down in front of her. You know what? Sometimes that's what we need to be. We need to be like little kids. I'm, I'm going to have three of my heartbeats with me today. The smaller versions. I'll have the older versions there too with the sarcasm. <laughs> but that's okay. I love them too. We just need to know that what we speak should be a representation of who we say we are. Let your light shine in every circumstance because you are an example that your children have in front of them all of their life. We may not be with them all of their life, but what you've lived before them will sustain them after you're gone. Dang, I was hoping she was going to go long. Now I have no excuse next week. Proud of you. Proud of you. You blessed me. Bible says there's life and death in the tongue. And the thing is, is it's the smallest muscle in the body, but it's the hardest one to control. You know? Um, we've heard it said many, many times that <laughs> bruises will go away, but wounds of the heart take a long time to heal. You know, we used to say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never harm me. That's, as a kid, that's funny to say, but it's not true. Because words harm. Words hurt. Sometimes words, they are harder to get over. than I'd rather, sometimes I'd rather, some, don't do this, slap me, <laughs> than say something just devastating to me. As a pastor, you hear a lot of things, things are said, um, but as parents, things are said, as adults, things are said. Children, it's amazing, children can be sitting here, and, and, and you know, Liza and Presley walked up here, and Presley had the money, or Liza had the money, no, Presley had it, Liza took it, she took it back, she looked at her like, don't take this, and she put it, and then Liza wanted, but I guarantee you they forgot about it. Before they got out the door, it was over. If that had been adults, we'd still be fighting about it next week. Words. What a, what a great topic. I want to do something this morning. Debbie, you shouldn't have went back up there. 
Um, I want all the moms to come forward, please. All the moms, spiritual, physical, whatever. Basically, all the ladies, come forward. Come forward. <clears throat> I really want you to understand, grab something. Hey, there's my photographer. I didn't know you was here. Where's your camera? No. You need to do that again for me one day. Y'all come up. Y'all are too far away. Y'all act like y'all scared. I ain't going to do nothing. I'm just going to throw some water. I mean, uh, <laughs> um, I know she don't want to be recognized, but it's so good to have Betty, Tammy, and Wendy yeah. today. Yeah. I have to. It blows my heart good that you're here. Um, I want to pray over you. And I'm not saying this because my wife's here, but my daughter's here, and my sisters are here. I'm not, I'm not saying this because she's not, she's not really an in-law. She's like one of mine. Um, but moms in any, any sort, no, and I just say the word mom. I'm talking spiritually, physically, whatever. Moms to me, are not appreciated enough. I, I just, you know, I, my dad was my best friend. My dad was my fishing partner. My dad was my, 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 my go-to guy. My dad was just my paint buddy. He would paint anything you asked him to paint, even your shoes, because he painted his, and his doctor wanted some. He's giving me your shoes, and I'll paint them. I said, don't do that. He will. But my mom was my rock. My mom was my, my, uh, uh, there's a lot of times church and ministry, I'll, I'll, I'll be in my office praying or I'll just be walking around the church and I'm like, mom, I wish she was here because there's some things I'd really like to talk to you about. Um, so I'll just, I'll just talk to them, I'll just say them anyway. But moms, you are appreciated. You are loved. You are we're grateful, thankful for you, for all of you, for what you do. And, and our children are a reflection of, of what we put in their life. They are. And I know I'm going to say this, and I know I'm not right, but, you know, I think my kids have the best mom. See? See? See how this works? Because to me, they do, but to you, you're so, you know what I'm saying? We have the best moms before us. Right, guys? We got the best moms. We got the best influences than, than, than anywhere in the world. I think New Life has the best moms on the planet. Yeah. We're grateful and thankful for you all. I want to pray with you. Father, I pray a blessing over our women. Moms, spiritually or physically, I pray for e e even grandmothers. Sometimes grandmothers have to step in and, and become more than just a grandmother. I, I, don't, I, you know, I think that name grand is awesome <laughs> when you tie it to a mother. But God, I just pray a, a blessing over their lives. I pray for peace, for joy, for comfort. I pray for guidance and direction. I pray, God, for your power, your anointing. To, your, to be upon them. I pray, God, that you will lead them and guide them in every direction of their life as they lead and guide their children, whether if they're, whether if they're small or, or even grown, Lord, still be that influence, still be that godly figure, that mother that they can rely on, that Proverbs 31 woman that her children call her blessed. We're thankful this morning that we can celebrate today at New Life our moms. And, Lord, I'm thankful for everyone that's in this room and those that's not here today that couldn't be with us. We, we pray this blessing over them. And, Lord, we, we remember those that have gone on before us today. If our moms, if your mom's here, then we're, we're grateful. But we, we, we think about those that have gone on, that have left that, 
that example before us to follow. We're thankful for the moms that have poured into their children. Now, Lord, bless these ladies today. Not just today, but bless them and they're going in and they're coming out. Put a, put a, a special touch upon them as, as today we celebrate Mother's Day. We thank you. And I pray this blessing over each and every one. Even those that are on Facebook may be watching at home. We, we bless you this morning. We pray over you. We love you. We honor you. We celebrate today. And we ask you in Jesus' name, amen. And I say happy Mother's Day to you all. God bless you. We love you. Um, Deb, you got somebody going to, huh? Deb's going to be giving you something on your way out, moms. Uh, there's a sheet outside. Please stop by the desk and sign up for food for tomorrow for the Moss family. Sign up, please, for food. Sign up what you're going to bring. There's a list. Y'all not listening? There's a list. If you're going to be able to, to help out tomorrow with food, please sign up and, and, and let us know what you're bringing. God bless you all.